Reflection Relay Event Supervisor for 29 years now. Reflection Relay has survived 29 years. Um, and it is by far the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any of you coming back, you've already coached it before? A few of you have. Okay. There really isn't a real big change from last year. There's a big change from previous years, but from last year there's not a really huge change. First thing you should have is hopefully your <coughs> uh, head coach from your building has given you a set of the rules so that you know exactly what is going on. And basically everything I'm saying right now is going to be on those rules. If you don't have the rules, you can get them yourself if you go to the county website, which is macombso.org, and you click on events and reflection relay, and you can get to the rules by clicking right there. And the rules are all right here. Everything we're talking about today should be right in the rules. Also, on this website, there is um, extra help for what that's going to come after today. <coughs> so think I'll be posting different things. There'll be stuff up there. And right now it looks like, oops, it looks like this. <coughs> because it's not after today. Sometime next week, all of the uh, event pages will get posted with anything that was handed out today, it'll get posted on here. So it'll be ready for you soon. The, uh, there are also protractor templates, and there's also a large protractor that you see right here. So if you want to print out protractors, they're here, all different sizes. You can make them big, you can make them small, whatever you want. And what people really wanted was the great big protractor that's on the floor. And you can download it right here. And you can like take it to Office Max and you can print it out. I think it says right here how much it costs to print it out. It's not much. You can print, it, print one out for like $10. So, and then if you want to laminate it, unfortunately at, like at Office Max, I think it's like $32 to laminate this thing. However, if you're familiar with Macomb Intermediate School District, they have a teacher's workshop. It's right there on Garfield, right by Center Campus <coughs> of South Macomb, or uh, Macomb Community College Center Campus. Macomb Intermediate School District has a teacher's workshop, <coughs> and you can laminate it for like five bucks. So <clears throat> that would be very helpful. Also on this page, soon there will be frequently asked questions that will, as you start sending in the questions, we'll be posting them here for everybody. So if you ask a question, we'll answer your question, but it'll also be posted for everybody. As of right now, it's not working yet. We're going to start it up after today. All right, and then the last thing you need to know about this website is that there is a video. A couple of years ago, we, I made a video, my husband made a video of what Reflection Relay is all about. So it's, I don't know, I don't know, just 10 minutes or something like that. Basically saying everything we're going to be saying here. So if you get back with your kids and you've forgotten something, and it doesn't answer it on the website here. If you watch that video, it pretty much will talk about a lot of the same stuff, at least from part one. Now, this is a little bit old, and our rules have changed over the course of the years. So some of the stuff on that video is not, uh, uh, is not up to date. Like the, back then, there used to be a paper and pencil test. Now we have a tabletop version. So there's a few things that are different, but I'd still, we left it up there because we still think it will be helpful. All right, so all of that is there for you to, uh, any information you need is going to be right there. All right, when you are coaching your kids, there are really only two things that your kids need to know about light. They need to know that light travels in a straight line, and they need to know that when light is reflected off of a flat 
mirror, <coughs> the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. We'll be talking about what that means as we move along here. By the way, all right, now for part one, this is the three-dimensional reflection relay because they'll be able to, they're going to be holding the mirrors and they can turn the mirrors this dimension, this dimension, or this dimension. So it's three-dimensional. What you're going to need to have for uh, the part one is you're going to need to have a mag maglev flashlight. Maglev, is that the right word? Maglite. Maglite flashlight. And the reason you want a maglite flashlight is because you can focus that beam into a narrow beam. Okay? And you want to do that for your kids, have a narrow beam. You're also going to need, need to have some kind of a stand for the kids for to hold that uh, flashlight. Uh, my husband just built something out of wood so it can <coughs> lay in there and, and, and lay horizontal to the floor. Um, you're going to need four mirrors. Now they do, uh, you can cut your own mirrors, but since I've been doing reflection relay for 29 years, I learned how to cut mirrors. And we've cut all the mirrors, <coughs> sanded the edges so that it, there shouldn't be any sharp edges on there. Uh, but if you don't want to cut your own mirrors, they do sell the mirrors. I think there's four in a package. Is it four or five in a package for five bucks? Four? Okay. So, and that's all you need for uh, reflection relays. You need the four mirrors. So they do sell those up there. Um, then what you're going to need to do is to stick them to the wall the same height as your flashlight. So this one right here is the same height as the flashlight. And then you may want to put one above and one below because according to the rules now, the mirror does not have to be the same height as the flashlight. It could be a little higher, could be a little lower. <coughs> You're going to need this large protractor that has an 80 centimeter radius. And the only reason it's 80 centimeters is because that's how big the roll paper was that I had 29 years ago when I made this. So it's stuck, 80, 80 centimeters. But you'll notice the protractor has zero in the center. Usually it goes from zero to 180, but this one we have zero in the center and it goes to 90 on one side and 90 on the other. You'll need a stopwatch and you'll need a couple of targets. I just use these targets like this. That's the size of the bottom of the globe in my classroom. That's how I got that size. Just a nice big target. I think it's 12 inches. You need a red one and a green one. And then you'll be working in a classroom sized room. Okay, so you don't want to be working in a great big gymnasium or into in a little closet either. Around a classroom sized room. Now the students do have to use my mirrors. Uh, which are the exact same mirrors that you see here. Uh, and they can use any other materials they want to bring with them, although there's nothing that I particularly recommend. And they may not bring their own light source. They can't bring their own flashlight either. So they want to make sure that they're holding the mirror so that there's as much reflection possible and figure out what's the best way to hold it and to hold it steady. Even though you might be wiggling, you got to keep this steady as, as steady as possible. So some want to hold it up against them, some hold it out. Are your feet going to be apart? Or should your feet be together? Should your feet be in front of each other? That's, these are all things that they have to figure out. All right. Now, you have to figure out who's your steadiest person. Because the steadiest person should probably be standing by the flashlight. They're going to have to hold that beam of light for the longest amount of time because the beam of light is going to go from my mirror to another mirror. It might be the mirror on the wall, it might be another mirror that another student has and that has to reflect on all four mirrors and then hit the target. Now there will be three students with mirrors plus they have to use one of those mirrors. Now the only mirror I have uncovered right now is the mirror that's the same height as the flashlight so they would have to use that mirror. So they're reflecting it off of four mirrors in order to hit the target. So the person who's here 
is who's going to get the light from the flashlight is going to have to hold it for a little while longer than everybody else. So they sh that should be your steadiest person, all the way down to your wiggliest person should be the last person to get the light, and hopefully they can hold it still for three minutes. Um, three seconds, right? Three seconds, three seconds, thank you. Okay, zero is pointing right to the mirror. At the, tur at the tournament, it will be taped down. I just didn't tape it down here. Uh, no part of the student's body can be any closer to the mirror than the edge of this protractor. And the reason we did that is, many years ago, we had students that would do this. And then I couldn't tell, as the judge, I couldn't tell if they were actually hitting both mirrors. So I had to back them off of that for a little bit. So I, as a judge, I can tell, are you really using all the mirrors? Um, they can use a protractor to help them estimate where that beam of light is reflected. So. If you're standing over here, the first student looks over there and says, gee, I'm looking at that, if I'm going to send it right to the mirror, to the permanent mirror, I'm looking at just about, looking at 50 degrees. When I look at that mirror, it's right about at 50 degrees. So since we know <coughs> that the angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, the angle that the light is coming in at on this side will equal the angle that it comes out at this side. So I can use this protractor to help me determine I'm probably going to stand here because that beam of light is going to come in at 50 degrees and probably come out at 50 degrees. So that kind of lets you know where you're going to place your body. If when, whoever's going to pick up the beam of light from the permanent mirror, that tells them approximately where to stand. Okay, students will not be able to move the permanent mirror or the protractor or the flashlight or the target. The only thing really that they can move are their three handheld mirrors. They can lean on furniture. There will be furniture in the classroom. I have no control over what kind of furniture is in the classroom. So they, they can lean on the furniture, but I really don't recommend they practice that since they, uh, we don't know what kind of furniture will be in the room, they may be practicing with certain kind of furniture to lean on and then they'll be all you know, confused when they see you know, that's different desks or ta tables or whatever. Um, they will have one minute to talk to each other to figure out a plan of where they're going to stand. So the preparation time, that one minute, is used in the case of a tie, which rarely happens in reflection relay, in the case of a tie, the team that prepared the fastest would be declared the winner. <clears throat> I, can't, I can't remember the last time I had a tie in reflection relay. So don't worry about using, you know, preparing really, really fast. The kids should be worried about making sure that they are exactly in the right spot and being accurate in where they're planning to be. Uh, you may want to, you do need to select a team leader because when I ask, when I give them their mirrors and they're setting up <coughs> ready to go, somebody needs to tell me we're ready. And what happens is if you don't have a team leader, then this person will say we're, we're ready. And then the other person says, well, no, we're not. And then pretty soon we have a little argument over whether we're ready or not. And I don't know whether to stop the watch now or stop it later. Um, so you need to have a team leader that will tell us when it is, uh, when the team is ready. So the stopwatch starts when the flashlight is turned on, and the stopwatch stops when the beam of light is on the target for three seconds. The beam of light has to hit all four mirrors. I won't stop the stopwatch until it has used all four mirrors and it has been on that target for three seconds. Uh, so we'll do a real quick, um, <clears throat> a real quick demonstration here. Can I have three demonstrators? Are you wiggly or? So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I know she's going. She's looking at about 50 degrees when she looks at that mirror. So you're going to stand at about 50 degrees. This is all part of the one-minute prep time. 
I'm just speeding up the one minute prep time because my beeper already ran off. <laughs> All right, and then she's going to reflect it probably to you, and then you're going to go with it. Okay, so use all of the one minute, okay? So, one minute's up, or they told us that they're done. So what we'll do, does somebody have a stopwatch on their, on their phone? Okay, a whole bunch of you, so we'll have everybody. There we go. All right, so <clears throat> the stopwatches go on when the flashlight goes on. So stopwatches start in three, two, one. And she sends it to the mirror. Hey, you got to angle it she towards the mirror. She grabs it over here. Where is that? I'm going to help you. It's okay, a little good. bit farther back. And you probably need to go down a little, maybe. There you go. It's oh, on your arm. You have to angle it towards me. angle it to her. Oh, there, I can see it on the wall. Okay. And, and then it's going to go up there. 1,001, 1,002, 1,000, stop. How many seconds was that? How much? 25. <laughs> 25 seconds or so. Okay. So that's what we'll do. They have, this is the only change this year, is they will have a maximum of one minute to hit that target. In the past, we've had a maximum of two minutes to hit that target, and that is a really long two minutes. <laughs> you stand there and you wait and you wait and wait for it. And very few take two minutes to get up there. But you know what? If, you get, if you're already at one minute, you're not going to meddle in this event. To, do, to meddle in this event, you want to be able to hit that target and stay on it and get a score of less than 10 seconds like maybe even less than eight seconds. So for each so. mirror, though, you lose a second, right? Or a point or something? No, this one is just based, uh, the score for this one is just how many seconds did it take you to hit that target, okay? The other one, it's points That's per exactly mirror. That one. Yeah. So, um, so, I forgot what I was saying. So yeah, okay, that's what we said. Yeah. So you want to they want to be able to get on that target in you know three or four or five seconds and hold it there for three seconds. Okay, that three seconds that you hold it there, that's part of your score. Okay? So it they have to do it fast. Um, if it goes off of the target, we stop and we make when you get back on, we start all over and start counting all over again. Okay? Before I go on to the other one, questions about this one. Does everybody compete in the same rooms? That everybody has the same? At, at the district tournaments, I think they are all in the same room. But at the county tournament, I have four rooms that, for this one, I will have four rooms. And what we do is we set the, we set the course up exactly. All the exact okay. same angles, all the exact same distances. <coughs> The only thing I don't have control over is what the furniture is in there. So that's why I say don't don't plan on using the furniture because I don't know what we're going to have. So everyone's going to go, it's going to be like sequential, all the teams are going to be going sequential. Oh, what happens is four teams, I'll pull in four, four teams at a time and you're going to go to part two first, have everybody do part two first. And then when you're done with part two, I will be in the hall and I will be putting people into a part one room. So, and parents and coaches and everybody will get to watch your team only. So, you'll be able to go in and watch your team. You can't go in and watch other teams because in the past we've had problems with people going in and spying on other teams and coming out and coaching their kids on what to do. So, we had to stop that. Two questions. You said, are those the exact size mirrors? The exact size mirrors, mirrors three inches by four inches. You said they have them. Who's they? They, the there's a, in the center hallway, they are selling, Great. they sell stuff for events, and this is one of the things they sell. And at the end there, when you were helping the lady with the mirror, are the coaches allowed to do that with children? During practice, but not during the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, during practice, yes, that's what you want to be doing. Exactly what I did over here. But you can't during the event. What's that? During the event, you have to sit there silently. Yeah, during the event, you sit over to the side and you have to be quiet. 
So that's the hardest that's part the about being a coach. <laughs> There's a teacher's workshop at There's a teacher's workshop at Macomb Intermediate School District on Garfield. And you don't have to be a teacher to use it. And it's upstairs in the teacher's library. And like I said, it's it's about five dollars for laminate. Or take it to your school building where you're coaching and have them laminate. If you have a big laminator. If they have a big enough. Yeah, my school. Find out for them first. That's free. Yeah, yeah. It's their program. They should let me. Yeah, in my like school, we don't have one this big. So, but if, yeah, if your school has one that big, yeah, go for it. It's free. Kind of. You paid for it with taxes. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Just at Lakeside Learning at 53 and 59 has one. And they'll do it for like two and a half hours. Really? Well, Lakeside Learning? Lake Shore Learning. Lake Shore Learning. Oh, Paul Road and yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. 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 they right. do. They do the right. Cents Wonderful. Yeah. I didn't know that. Now the tables at the college are going to be a different height. Is that going to make a difference? Like, you know, you said some kids are like prone to holding it in a certain yep. place. That's a good point. We're going to be at a college. The tables are probably going to be a little higher than in your elementary building. So you may want to raise your uh, flashlight up a little bit or even put your flashlight at different heights <coughs> so that that first person doesn't get too used to being at a certain height. Yeah. 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 All right. Does that stand a specific size? Or no, no, there's no specific size for the stand. It's just, just a stand. the amount of wood my, head, my husband has available. Target size? And placement, does it matter? Target size is about 12 inch diameter circle. Placement of the target can be anywhere. I've had targets under the table, I've had targets on the floor, I've had targets up, you know, on here, I've had targets inside a box. The target can be anywhere. Get real creative with your target. But, the, you know, everything else is pretty much set, but the target can be anywhere. Oh, absolutely. The kids should be talking to each other. Absolutely. Does the fixed mirror have to be a certain number mirror, like the second or the third? It can be any number. It's almost always the second or the third mirror. I'd be real impressed if you could make it the fourth mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be either the second or third mirror. So. All right. Is the target mirror the same height as the source? The target can be anywhere. No, no the, the mirror. The, the, the fixed mirror? This, the fi this fixed mirror is the same height as the flashlight. But, oh, something I forgot to mention and I'm out of time. Something that, uh, they'll actually do two challenges. They do the red challenge and then immediately they'll do the green challenge. And I'll move the flashlight to a different spot. <coughs> We'll have a green target somewhere else in the room, and I may cover up the flashlight that is, or cover up the mirror that's flashlight height, and now the mirror is higher than the flashlight, which really messes up this person. So they have to be thinking completely different now that this mirror is a different height. Or it might be below the surface, or below the, the flashlight height. And it says right in the rules, I think it's six inches above or below flashlight height. So that's another thing you need to practice is don't keep that mirror in, at the same height. That, that little bit of movement of the mirror makes a huge difference. All right, one more question, then we've got to move on. Two different targets, is it red one and a green one you were saying? Yes. Okay, so one they of the do red this twice? Yes, they do okay. this twice. And then the same and then we do, or they do that first. Right. 